Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and A video right here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel and No DQ and A videos affiliate RingsideNews.com. This is my first edition of No DQ and A video here in Portland, Oregon. I would like to thank you all for your support and your comments, wishing me well. I really do appreciate all of the feedback and continued support. Time to get back to business now. We have. WWE Money in the Bank topics, we have Monday Night Raw topics, the main event for Battleground is now set, I will be discussing that and other things in the world of WWE and the world of wrestling. So let's get started with the first one today which comes from Sarah. Hey Aaron, we finally got what we wanted, Shield Triple Threat, who do you see walking out as champion at Battleground? Right now I think it's too soon to call that match, I think that with four weeks left of television buildup, it's hard to say what the overall direction will be. I would be shocked if Ambrose holds on to the WWE title past Battleground. If he's a long-term champion, I would be very surprised, but you never know. Maybe WWE is giving up on Roman Reigns and they are going to try going with Dean Ambrose as the top guy. That would surprise me though. Somehow, I think when this is all said and done, Roman Reigns will once again be WWE Champion and the company will continue to push him to the top and try to make him the new John Cena. I just, I do not see WWE giving up on this. Despite the fans continuing to boo Roman Reigns, I think WWE is going to continue to do what they've been doing with Reigns and hope that maybe eventually the fans will just accept it. But right now, it's too soon for me to make a prediction on that, other than I, I would be surprised if Ambrose wins that match at Battleground and keeps the WWE title for any extended period of time. Got this one here from No DQ and a Fan. Hey Aaron, do you think the Shield feud will end at Battleground or continue into SummerSlam? I would be surprised if the Shield triple threat goes beyond the Battleground match. Now it's possible there could be some disputed finish and then there's another triple threat at SummerSlam. But you have to keep in mind that Battleground is a week after the WWE Draft, which is going to take place on the first live SmackDown, which is right before the Battleground pay-per-view. My guess is by announcing this match, WWE is getting it out of the way because more than likely, one of the SHIELD members will be separate from the other two on a different brand. And if that's the case, you really cannot do another SHIELD triple threat match. I'm thinking that this is just going to be the one and only SHIELD triple threat match, and why not? Just let them go out there and do their thing and make it special. If the SHIELD has two, three, four triple threat matches, each one will be less important than the previous one. Just go out there, let them have one classic triple threat match, and that'll be something that fans will be able to remember for many years. I think they should just do one match and just go all out. This one comes from RIP Mitch, at Never Shuts Up. I like that username. Do you think that Triple H will interrupt the Shield triple threat and cost Seth Rollins the match? This is definitely a possibility because my guess is it's inevitable that Seth Rollins will turn babyface and there was talk about doing Seth Rollins versus Triple H back at WrestleMania before Seth Rollins got hurt. I could see Triple H maybe having a fallen out with Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins yelling at Stephanie one too many times and Triple H says enough is enough and Triple H costs Rollins either at Battleground or maybe on Monday Night Raw and that sets up a one-on-one -on -one match at SummerSlam, Seth Rollins versus Triple H. That is what I'm expecting at this point. Plans can change, but knowing Triple H, he likes to go out there and have the big money matches, and Rollins versus Triple H was a match that was on the books. One would think that WWE will revisit that. I mean, they're revisiting the Y family versus the New Day, which was an originally scheduled match. So why not do Triple H versus Seth Rollins? Seth Rollins has been using the pedigree. It just makes sense to go in that direction at some point. And Battleground leading to SummerSlam with Triple H getting involved. 
that could definitely work. Got this question here from Charlie Wong. What was your first impression of WWE signing their first Chinese wrestling athletic to their developmental contract? I think you meant athlete. I don't know anything about the guy, but it makes sense for WWE to sign a Chinese superstar because WWE is now expanding into China and this is an untapped market for WWE. China is the most populated country in the world. Billion plus people live there. It is potentially a gold mine for WWE. If they can get a strong relationship going with China, then WWE can make even more money and be more successful as a global organization. And it only makes sense from a PR standpoint to sign a Chinese superstar. Will he get over in WWE? Time will tell, but if he's a great athlete, he'll definitely get the opportunity to show his stuff in WWE. And because of the fact that international stars like Nakamura are succeeding in WWE, he definitely has a shot, perhaps now more than ever. Got this one here from Paul Heyman Guy. Why does WWE cater to casuals when it's the hardcore fans that spend the most money on the product? The idea is that WWE wants to create as many young fans as possible. I think that the idea is that you get them hooked when they're young and when they grow up. They have kids, they have fond memories of growing up with wrestling, so when they have kids, they convert their kids into wrestling fans. You always want to draw in the young audience and get them hooked. I think that wrestling is something that kids will tend to get hooked on and then continue to follow it as adults. I'm not sure if there's a lot of people that just start watching wrestling as adults. I'm sure there are, but I think it's most common people get into wrestling when they're kids. I know myself, I started watching wrestling when I was three years old. And I think that's the way it is for many people where as kids, they're fond of these larger than life characters. They grow up and it sticks with them and they pass it on to their children. And it's just a repeating cycle. Got this one here from Austin West. Hey Aaron, do you possibly see Randy Orton have one more IC title reign to boost its prestige like Cena did with the US title? I think that's a possibility if Randy Orton is on the same brand as the IC title. I'm not really a big fan of WWE repeating that storyline where they try to have an established legend hold the title to give it prestige again. I just feel Randy Orton would be better off as a special attraction, put him in there against Brock Lesnar, put him in there against other top names for big pay-per-view main event matches and use him on a more part-time basis rather than have Orton come back and just be in the mix constantly non-stop and putting him in the IC title I think is a waste of Orton. I think you should put him in there with the biggest names possible and do the special attraction matches at major pay-per-views. This one comes from Boston Rules 15. What do you think about a mid-card title for NXT? It would give the guys that are not in the NXT title picture more meaning. To be fair and honest, I'm not really a fan of that because I think WWE is already oversaturated enough with too much television and NXT is only a one hour show every week and it's not really a must-see show. I know Jeff will say you have to watch NXT every single week. I'm talking about Jeff Meacham, of course, but in my opinion, NXT is something you want to watch when they have the big takeover events. I really do not follow the weekly NXT shows. So I'm not really a fan of the idea of having another title because if there is another title, then it's just more television and they might feel pressure to do two hours instead of one. And I just think things are fine the way they are now. If it's not broken, why fix it? This one comes from Simon Lee. Hey Aaron, will Velvet Sky end up one day in a WWE ring? I almost was not sure who you were talking about. Um, when you send me the questions, try to use their actual name and not the hashtag or the uh, handle because sometimes I do not recognize the handle of the person that you're referring to. Uh, but yeah, Velvet Sky, WWE, 
Everyone knows her relationship with Bubba Ray Dudley and she's no longer with TNA Wrestling. I think there's definitely a chance of it happening. Is it a guarantee? No, but she knows somebody. She knows Bubba Ray. She has an in. She, she has a connection, somebody who can vouch for her. And I'm sure there's other, other people in WWE that worked with Velvet in TNA, guys like AJ Styles, that can also vouch for her. So I think that there is at least a decent chance of her ending up in WWE at some point. This one comes from Ryan Curtis. I think it's Curtis, I'm not sure. Or CRTS Kurtz, I'm not sure. Hey Aaron, how would you have booked Zack Ryder's run as IC champion after his WrestleMania win? I could literally say anything and it would have been better than what WWE actually did. Zack Ryder should have at least had a one month reign with the title. The fact that he won it and forced me to shave off my beard and then the next night he loses the title right back to The Miz, that was so dumb and I was frustrated with that. Zack Ryder, he got such a big reaction from the fans and he's a guy that despite the booking continues to be over with the fans and some people gave up on him but some people still have that that interest in him and they they want to see the guy succeed and I really do not understand why Zack Ryder was pushed to win the match and then had to lose to The Miz literally the next night just it, it really hurt the title in my opinion that really damaged the IC title and the prestige of it to basically do a title change just for the sake of swerving the fans and 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 making everyone shocked at what happened. I mean, it, it really was just ridiculous. Got another one here from Simon Lee. Hey Aaron, will WWE ever bring back Drew Galloway? Treat him the way that TNA did and make him a much bigger star? Probably not. I mean, for one thing, Drew Galloway is in TNA. He's in the main event picture. I do not see him leaving the company anytime soon. And when he was in WWE, he was part of 3MB. And I think it's unlikely that fans are going to forget that. As much as WWE likes to think that fans forget everything, they really don't. People associate Drew Galloway with a 3MB group. And I think that that will prevent him from ever becoming anything significant in WWE again. Maybe, I mean, there have been guys that left for a while and came back. You look at Luke Gallows, for instance, he's doing well. So I would not rule it out completely, but I think it's unlikely that he comes back to WWE and becomes a major star. I, I think the odds are against it. This one comes from Ty Marshall. Should WWE do a best of DDP D DVD before or after he goes into the Hall of Fame? It makes sense to do it before he goes into the Hall of Fame so you can build up hype and interest and get him some exposure, get younger fans interested in DDP and being able to find out more about him. So when he does go into the Hall of Fame, people could say, oh, DDP. And kids could say, oh, I know DDP from the DVD. And that way it makes the Hall of Fame even more special and gets more people tuning in, more people interested in the Hall of Fame. And I would definitely put out a, a DDP DVD, put the match with Goldberg on there, put the match with Sting on there from Nitro. He even had a couple of decent matches with Hogan. The matches with Randy Savage in 97. I mean, DDP had a lot of good matches in WCW and uh, he was one of the company's most iconic characters. So. I would definitely do it. Put out a DVD later this year, put him in the Hall of Fame next year. Definitely deserves it. Got this one here from Jeremy Hastings. Hey Aaron, what is your take on WWE's bogus best catchphrases of the decade video WWE posted on their YouTube page? That was hilarious. WWE posted a video, the top greatest catchphrases of the decade and number one was Roman Reigns' the guy catchphrase. Really? I mean, I think WWE did it on purpose just to troll the fans, but maybe that's just more of the WWE corporate machine trying to drill it in everyone's heads that Roman Reigns is the, the guy in WWE, the guy, but 
The fact that it got so many negative comments that WWE had to disable the comments, um, that to me shows how petty WWE is. It, it's really pathetic how they got so butt hurt over the comments and supposedly the fan comments don't mean anything and it's, it's all irrelevant and the fans' opinions don't matter, yet WWE censors the comments and, and blocks people access to comment on the YouTube video. And it's just one YouTube video out of a dozen that WWE posts a day. And they had to disable comments. So petty. Just really ridiculous. That'll wrap it up for this edition of No DQ and A video. Subscribe at youtube.com slash Aaron Rift No DQ. Check out my personal account. I will be posting videos again shortly at youtube.com slash Aaron Rift. And of course, stay tuned to nodq.com for the very latest news and rumors regarding Battleground. And I will see you guys next time.